Um, today I thought it would be kind of a fun video to talk about what got me into the hobby. So I guess we'll call it like my fish story or journey or something like that. Um, I haven't really tried to look for this on YouTube or anything from other YouTubers um, or anything like that. But I kind of be interested to hear from other people and stuff what what they did that got them into the hobby and everything. Um, it's not something you hear about very often, so I thought it'd kind of be fun. So I guess we're we'll lap where we'll start off is just kind of talking about um, like my first first fish tank. Um, so. Growing up as a kid, my parents really didn't know a lot about fish tanks or anything. Um, basically, they had the thought process that maybe a lot of begin beginning fish keepers have, that they don't know anything about fish, and they think, give the fish some water, some dechlorinated water, um, some food, and clean it every week or whatever, and it'll be fine. Um, and so I went through a lot of fish, a lot of, you know, beta fish and goldfish and everything. Because if you guys know anything about keeping fish, it, that is just like the worst thing that you can possibly do. Um, so I went through those fish growing up. Um, never really understood why they died so quickly, but just thought it was kind of, you know, a normal thing. That maybe just fish just didn't live very long or something. Um... Then I got a little bit older, and I was probably in about high school or so when I found out that um, I, well, I tried to keep another fish. Um, again, I really still didn't know anything much about it. I had a catfish that I actually caught out of a lake with a friend with a Walmart bag, and it, like was a channel, black channel catfish, and it was really kind of sad because I didn't know anything about it at that time, and it didn't really grow like a catfish should, and if you've read up on stuff like that too, it's terrible for the fish, it'll stunt their growth growing up in too small of an environment, and everything like that, so it probably really wasn't the best for him, um, but what ended up happy, happening with that fish is that I moved to Arkansas to be with my boyfriend, and they had these cool frogs there that I've never seen, some uh, just green, some kind of uh, tree frog there, and I thought it was really cool and I really wanted to keep it, and I thought, hey, it'll be just like nature to put it in the, fi in the fish tank with my catfish. And so I built like a little land mass in there for the frogs and thought that they could swim part of the rest of the time if they wanted to. Um, and so I ended up like going outside and catching bugs for them and everything and putting them in the tank for the frogs. And it turned out to be a really bad experience. Um, what happened is that my my catfish got some kind of parasitic disease, I can't remember what it's called, where they basically get a milky overcoating on them. Um, so that wasn't too good at all. Um, it, it really kind of, I didn't know what it was at that time, I didn't know anything about fish medications or anything was even available for fish like that. So the only thing that I knew was just to leave him as is and I was like, huh, that's weird, well maybe it'll go away. And then I told the boss that I was working with at the time, at like one of my first jobs, what was going on and he said, oh, go to Walmart, um, get some stuff that's called Quick Cure and just put that in there and he'll be fine. He, that should get rid of the problem. And so I go to Walmart, get that stuff, didn't read anything on the back of it. I put the one drop in the one gallon that I was keeping him in at that moment, um, and he died pretty much like instantly, I think. Um, it was too much strain for him. Yeah, it was, it was just too much strain for him. Um, so he died just like instantly, and 
a lot of those things with those kind of medications is you really have to be careful with them being suitable for scaleless fish or not. Um, and that definitely was a medication that was not safe for him anyways. So that could have possibly been part of the thing that pushed him over. I think it was also just too late um, for anything to have been done, honestly. Um, which is sad to say, but that's just kind of how it is. Um, so I learned from that experience that there were medications out there and that um, things go wrong with fish, they get sick, and that there is a way to treat them though. Um, so after that, um, I got tired of catching insects and everything for the frogs. I didn't really want to go buy and purchase crickets. Crickets kind of creeped me out. so didn't really want to deal with those um, so I ended up just letting the frogs loose again outside um, I can't remember how long it was after that that I decided that I wanted to have more fish again though and so I went to the store and bought if I remember right it was two yellow grommies uh, maybe a catfish because at that time I really still liked catfish which I do like catfish, it's just they're difficult to keep with smaller fish and stuff. You really have to be careful with what kind of fish they can fit in their mouth because they will. Catfish will just pretty much eat anything that they can get their mouth on. So, um, I can't remember what the other fish were that I got. Um, but basically most of them ended up dying. Um, there was one fish that I got to keep out of it. Um, I remember especially, I don't know how he survived, there was probably some kind of parasite or something that was killing those fish off, I don't know, but he had somehow survived it. Um, after that experience that I had with Whiskers anyways, I, which that was the catfish's name, was with Whiskers, I didn't really mention that before, but that's what I named him was Whiskers. And, um, I just kind of, as a precaution, kept putting that quick cure in some of the water and stuff when I got fish and uh, I guess it just didn't kill off maybe whatever was going on or I don't know what happened to those fish but they didn't live. Also this was a time that I didn't know anything about the nitrogen cycle so that very well could have been a culprit in it too. Um, probably was. So after that, um, that one fish lived. It was one of the uh, yellow grommies and I named him Pikachu because um, I really like Pikachu and he resembled a Pikachu a little bit to me. So I had him for a while then I decided that I wanted to upgrade my tank and get more fish and so I bought a 20 gallon tank that I bought at Petco for the dollar per gallon thing so I got it for 20 bucks and um, I got some other fish in there too, like a, my blue opaline grommy that I had for a long time. Uh, I had a black skirt tetra. I think I had like a Chinese or Siamese algae eater in there. Um, I think it was Siamese, which I named Arcanine. And he was really cool. Like he liked to stand up on his fins and stuff. But he was terrible for messing up my hardscape. Like he always dug in the sand and made my rocks fall and everything. But, so I had those fish, and here's the thing guys, I was such an idiot with keeping fish at that time, that I thought that I was still, even with the 10 gallon, and even with this big 20 gallon, I still had the mindset that I needed to treat it like a fish bowl, and that every once in a while, I needed to just completely tear it down, break it down, and clean it out, and start over. And so I go in there with my toothbrush and everything, and at this time, I was really stupid. I was using soap on things, which I shouldn't have been doing. And I don't do anymore, but it was really just bad. I mean, I made sure all the time that I got all the soap rinsed off of it, but still, it's not good for your fish. And so what happened with that tank is I would just break it down, rinse it out, clean out the filter with the toothbrush and everything and just start all over and that was awful for the fish um, 
one of the times that I did that, it ended up getting really, really bad. The water got really dark, it got really murky, and it got really gross. And I noticed that all of my fish were gasping at the surface for air. And I didn't understand why. Um, and that's like the first thing that freaked me out. And I will admit that I kept seeing things when I looked online and stuff about the nitrogen cycle. Um, I kept seeing things, but I didn't really look at it and didn't really understand it, so I didn't take much time to realize what it was. But then I read that why they were gasping at the surface was probably very bad water quality toxins in the water and a low oxygen deficiency. And that really just made me consider, like, okay, well, what's causing those things? Why, why is this happening? Um, and that's when I finally really looked into the nitrogen cycle and read about it and was like, oh my gosh, that's what's happening. Um, I knew nothing about this. This is probably a big problem right now in my tank, and I need to fix this. And so, like, as quickly as possible, I... I think I completely changed a lot of the water out of that tank. I might have even completely tore it down again and started over again. But all my fish made it. Um, I got them out immediately, put them in fresh water. Um, well, I guess I can't say all of my fish made it. Most of my fish made it. Um, the only one that didn't make it was Arcanine because he couldn't get to the surface which still tears me up and makes me really, really sad that he died that way because I was ignorant. And that's why I wish that fish stores would, you know, do something, something to tell people about this stuff so that you don't just kill fish, you know. Lives are important and fragile things to any creature, I believe, and it's just wrong to basically put them in uncapable hands so that they can just have a risk of death because people don't know about these things. And it's just terrible and it's cruel. It's really animal cruelty. Um, it should not be legal. It shouldn't be allowed, in my opinion. That every owner should have to know of these things and be aware of these things before they're given that life. But that's just my little rant there on that um, so anyways um, after that happened I really started looking into this nitrogen cycle and making sure that I got it right that time um, doing water changes adding the safe uh, start biofiltration stuff um, all kinds of stuff to try and get it up and running the correct way and I did. Um, I got it up and running. Didn't have any problems really with it after that. Um, I read a lot of other stuff on how to, you know, still be able to change your filter without losing all of your beneficial bacteria. Uh, from there, it just, my hobby grew. You know, it came even more rewarding to me, honestly. I know that that sounds weird, because you would probably like to just throw fish in a tank and be able to just view them and enjoy them and not have to worry about taking care of them so much. That's one of the reasons why I think fish are thought of as kids pets is because they don't require a whole lot of maintenance. And while that's true, you still do need to remember to feed them at least, you know, every other day probably and, you know, um, you do need to perform water changes, you do need to clean out their filters you do need to do those little kind of things. Um, so it's not as easy as a lot of people would like to believe that it is. Um, and if you aren't willing to take on those responsibilities, then you really probably shouldn't buy fish. But let me tell you guys, I think it was, you know, more rewarding. Because not only then do you feel like you have something beautiful to look at, but you have lives that you're taking care of. And they kind of become like your little definitely pets but like little babies or something that you're taking care of and it's 
that much more important and fragile that you have to take care of them and make sure that they're okay. Um, so, you know, I just, I think that that's important. Um, ever since then, I, you know, I've started learning more and more about fish tanks, and now I've moved on to the point where, um, you know, I started at some point trying to make nitrogen filters and everything for the tank, which I'm still doing. I had one that I created at one point that worked really, really well, and I might share that with you guys someday if you're interested about it. Um, I'm trying one right now that I'm wanting to run, because the only thing I didn't like about the other filter that I made is that it was an in-the-tank one, and it was really just an eyesore. It didn't look good at all. It just took up space, and it, it just was not very cool. So, I didn't like it. So, that's what I'm currently working on. I'm also, um, I've moved on to keeping real plants. And that's something that I'm still in the process of learning about. Um, for the longest time, I didn't have any kind of special substrates. I just used regular gravel and sand. And they did okay, but it wasn't perfect. You know, I still haven't moved on to trying any kind of CO2 or anything yet. I've been considering it, but... I don't know if I really want to get that high tech into it. Uh, I kind of am fine with just keeping low tech, low tech tanks. Um, but I do like my plants and everything to look good, so that's why I'm trying out these different substrates like Eco Complete, which you can see on the bottom of all this tank, mixed with the sand. And I'm trying. Uh, I even tried a dirted tank. I haven't showed that tank quite yet. Um, I don't know how I feel about that one yet. It's been a while that it's been set up, and it's not really been showing that great of um, growth to me. Um, but I'm also try trying Seachem Fluorite. Um, it seems to be doing okay. I haven't had it in the tank very long yet, so I can't say much of it for it at this point. But, you know, I'll have updates at some point. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I think I have to say, guys, It's just... That was pretty much my fish journey and what got me to this point now is basically just, you know, unfortunately going through some deaths and learning experiences to get to the point that I am now to actually being a good home for fish to come to and not just a death to arrive home to. Um, so you guys are interested, I'd like to see some other YouTubers post videos of what their fish journey was and why they got to this point that they are with keeping fish. And um, if not, if you don't have a YouTube channel, just go ahead and post in the comments or anything, you know, uh, what got you to your point, what got you started on keeping fish, um, and what kept you in the hobby. So. Yeah, for me it's been just enjoying having the fish and seeing them flourish and have a good home. So, thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good one.